today we are going to discuss about the concept of fugacity and activity and concept and fugacity and activity are very important because the fugacity and activities are very important with respect to understanding the equilibrium process phase equilibrium as well as the chemical equilibrium or reaction equilibrium all those things so if you want to understand those things then you should know the fugacity and the activity now first we will concentrate on what is fugacity fugacity basically it is a derived thermodynamic property and it has same unit of pressure so why pressure is there then why you one person are introducing one person is introducing fugacity concept why it is at all required because no need to make thing complex when it is not required so or or it is actually helping to make things simpler so with respect to thermodynamic understanding of the metallurgical system or chemical system so for that fugacity you can tell is a abstract concept and it actually defined it is actually defined to facilitate certain calculation which involved with phase and chemical equilibrium if you look at a pure substance at given temperature and pressure t and p you can see that d mu equal to v dp minus s dt you can look at in the slide and you can check that and if you go for constant pressure what will happen a constant temperature what will happen the dt become zero so what will happen the d mu equal to v dp and how chemical potential are behaving all those things are known to us from previous lecture so if you check with ideal gas then v equal to rt by p and then if you use that concept and you can get the equation of d mu equal to rt dp by p and directly from the mathematical simple calculation rt equal to d of ln p but if you want to understand the real gas concept v equal to rt by p it's not true v not equal to rt by p for the real gas then we have to define a function or define a new concept that is called fugacity what it is it is the change in chemical potential with respect to pressure particular condition and if you check then the equation will become d mu equal to rt d of ln f and when that ln f we are introducing for the real gas so that our calculation will be easier we can manage our calculation on a calculation for the real gas also if we understand the concept of fugacity now if you check the limit when p tends to 0 then fugacity tends to p or if you can tell that f by p equals to 1 since ideal gas laws applies when pressure tends to 0 means the collision theory and all those things come into a place you are going to get real ideal gas characteristics so from that you can understand that fugacity you can tell that the fugacity is nothing but chemically effective pressure that fugacity are chemically effective means this fugacity concept help you understand in the real gas scenario in the real gas scenario how it is correlated with the chemical potential so it is actually change in chemical potential directly related logarithm of change in logarithmic change in fugacity it's a relation is there so now if you integrate this thing and you are going to get mu minus mu 0 r ln f by f0 that f prefix 0 or mu prefix 0 actually tells you the reference state because if you integrate something and it is a indefinite integral then you have to find out the integrating constant and how you are going to get the integrating constant from the initial condition or reference condition and here it is just a reference condition that it is denoting that mu prefix 0 or f0 is f suffix 0 is related to the reference state and that's why the for the mathematical calculation you are in order getting constant value you are introducing such a such a reference state
And now, if you check in the expression that the equation mu zero is already I told is a chemical potential at a reference pressure P prefix zero at the same temperature as chemical potential mu what you are considering or mu of your interest. Similarly, the fugacity Fi cap of a species in solution can be defined like that mu i minus mu i zero RTLN F i F zero. So from the expression, you can derive the criteria for phase equilibrium. And that criteria is will be based on your fugacity concept. So for a phase of alpha and beta in a equilibrium, what does mean by equilibrium? We understood that equilibrium always talks about lower freeing the free energy. So when it is in the equilibrium, then it also talks about there is a forward transformation as is equal to backward transformation rate. So in this condition, if you can tell, if you look at the diffusion equilibrium, then the I component chemical potential is alpha phase equal to I component of chemical potential at beta phase. This must be equal. And that we learned from the previous class, from the that free energy versus composition diagram of binary system. And then if you look at, now if you can put this two phase equilibrium condition in a equation form, in an expression equation form, then what you will get? You will see in the figure that this standard state alpha phase plus RT this way. And if, if you can correlate two things, because these two things are equilibrium, then what you are going to derive, you are going to get an expression where the first three terms of the equation are parts of a definition of fugacity. So in this way, you end up, you are going to get a condition that fugacity of a I component at alpha phase uh, equals to fugacity of beta component, fugacity of I component at beta phase, then only you are going to get the criteria for phase equilibrium in terms of fugacity. Previously, when we have no understanding of the fugacity, we look at on the ideal case, the ideal gas cases, then we talked same scenario in the based on pressure. Both side pressure will be same. We took uh, one example, gases, both are ideal, they are trying to mix and then they are going to get a equilibrium condition when pressure are equal. But when such kind of real gas and this chemical potential concept we are introducing, then the criteria for phase equilibrium we are going to get in terms of fugacity. What is that? Now, particular component fugacity of a, in a particular phase, that is Fi at alpha phase equal to particular component of a different phase of fugacity should be equal. So Fi alpha equal to Fi beta. Now, if you look at this plot, due to certain condition of equilibrium with respect to mass transfer, what we understand that fugacity of a particular state or particular phase equals of a particular component is equals to another phase or another component. Suppose this is a fugacity of liquid and fugacity of a vapor and this T and P is the overall pressure. So is now the concept is required to understand that is the vapor pressure. We will try to understand that. So before and you should understand if fugacity is less than pressure, then what will be the curve nature uh, with respect to fugacity equal to pressure? And if fugacity is greater than the pressure, what will be the curve nature? It's a very simple to understand, but that has very strong implication. So generally, we need to understand that when fugacity is equal to pressure, we try directly check with the ideal gas condition. But when it is not like that, deviation from equality between fugacity and pressure, then scenario totally different. Then we have to understand what is the role of fugacity or what is the role of deviation, how one. Now that is related to the vapor pressure. So we will now try to understand what is vapor pressure. If you check, any school days plus two 
this book that is written that vapor pressure or equilibrium vapor pressure is defined as the pressure exerted by a vapor in a thermodynamic equilibrium with its condensed phases may be solid or liquid at a given temperature in a closed system that is written and also i have written same thing in the slide but now we have to understand each part vapor pressure or equilibrium pressure why vapor pressure directly try to analogy get the analogy with the equilibrium pressure equilibrium vapor pressure so we generally we understand vapor pressure we refer vapor pressure as an equilibrium vapor pressure we used to take equilibrium vapor pressure why is it so because it takes the understanding to such extent where you can understand which pressure of a vapor you are going to get a thermodynamic equilibrium between the vapor and the condensed phase it may be solid may be liquid that is very important so that's why when you are defining a vapor pressure you have to define that pressure exerted by a vapor in a thermodynamic equilibrium with its condensed phases or with its liquid or solid phases then why we are looking at that it should be a constant temperature why temperature if it is very so what is the problem why we have to write in the definition at a given temperature at a given temperature means at a constant or specific temperature why you are writing why we are writing that why you are mentioning that we, that we have to understand vapor pressure is related to movement of the vapor atoms or molecules and that is directly dependent on the temperature if you look at kinetic three theory of gases then what is the definition of the temperature 3 by 2 kt equals to half mb square means kinetic energy of individual gas molecules is directly related to the absolute kelvin temperature so that's why that at a given temperature this word is there although this definition we learn or we came across very early days of our study of science but we have to i now our job is to identify importance of each term why it is using then you are look at the closed system closed system definition already we know it is the system where mass transfer is not allowed but energy transfer is allowed then only you can get that definition now what vapor pressure leads to evaporation can occur or condensation also can occur means from the liquid surface with respect to vapor the molecules or atoms can go out and go to the vapor phase then you can tell that it is a evaporation and same way vapor can come to the liquid state vapor molecules then it is a condensation so when equilibrium will reach rate of coming back of vapor molecule to liquid state equal to rate of liquid molecule going out from liquid state that should be equal so vaporization is a temperature dependent already we understand based on the theory of molecular movement and vapor pressure depends on the temperature this is a very important understanding now if you look at the same equation previous slide that fugacity of constant temperature and pressure and the vapor pressure for a fixed temperature t from the vapor pressure onwards to the higher pressure in the liquid phase reason we have to integrate from the vapor pressure pv of t to the pressure of interest so there is a reference state that you have to start with certain vapor pressure of particular t then you have to slowly slowly integrate that and you are going to get the different vapor pressure so now what we understood that that fugacity it is a condition where it is a deviation from ideal gas concept to the real state so you have to now understand that it is a chemically effective pressure so you have to consider the van der waals and all kind of interactions and you have to relate with the chemical potential okay so if you check very low pressure where one where one reaches ideal gas behavior pressure and fugacity are the same that we understood so we can imagine that the quantity of fugacity to be something like a 
collected pressure to reflect real gas properties. Now we have to go for certain visualization and to, to develop this concept, you have to understand physically, philosophically, what is fugacity? It looks like a corrected pressure for a gas phase or real gas phase to reflect real gas properties from the concept of ideal gas. So the deviation can be captured. The calculation can be facilitated. So that's why this kind of concept is rich. Now, now if you look at that molar volume of liquid VL is really, if you consider it to be incompressible state, and if you look at the picture, the thematic pressure temperature diagram, and I purposely put the unit bar and Kelvin because that is important. Because otherwise, you cannot get the scale of that. This is a solid liquid phase and vapor phase. In between three points, this is a triple point. You can tell that the absolute invariant point where degrees of freedom is zero. And those things we will understand later. But at vapor pressure line, you can see there is a isofugacity has to be applied. Means if you see in the vapor, means liquid and vapor, in that vapor pressure line with respect to liquid phase, there is a isofugacity line. That thing we have to understand. For a fixed temperature, if you see from the vapor pressure onward to the higher pressure in the liquid phase region, then you can calculate and you can understand that there should be a equilibrium condition where the vapor pressure of uh, for, for of the certain uh, fugacity of certain phase of certain component in a certain phase equal to fugacity of certain component of a certain in a certain phase. So from that concept, we can derive here that isofugacity line should be there if you are checking between liquid and vapor phase. Now we are coming to the next concept. We understood what is fugacity. It is a, just a chemically effective pressure or corrected pressure in order to capture the behavior of real gas, which is deviation, which has a deviation from ideal gas. That's all. Now we are going to understand what is activity. If you check activity, in one words, we can write or we can tell or we can represent like that, that it is available of material or available concentration to react, to re react. Means if that word actually tells you it should have certain relationship with the chemical potential because it's availability. So fugacity also having certain relationship of the chemical potential here also certain relationship of the chemical potential. Can, from the chemical potential, we understood if you are want to go for phase equilibrium or reaction equilibrium, you have to look at the chemical potential to get the diffusion equilibrium or any equilibrium process. And we also get the analogy concept between potential energy and feedback chemical potential. So from that, our understanding is now is it clear that chemical potential is very important with respect to reaction, phase, and some certain kind of equilibrium process. So in the solid or liquid state, the activity is introduced to express the chemical potential of the component of a particular solution. Now, the activity can be a express medium or express concept which can help to understand how chemical potential is important for a different components in a particular solution. <coughs> so here, this is the thing you can see that mu a equal to mu a star rtl and a mu a star is the chemical potential of a a is an individual component in the reference state for p equal to one bar mu star equal to mu zero this is generally people used to take as a convention that standard state now If you look at the picture, now we have to understand 
how it is related with uh, this picture, this concept, gives free energy versus change in gives free energy versus that composition already we know. Now we have to concentrate on such relationship, the relationship between molar free energy and activity. We have to understand how it is related. So if, if you see the expression of any solution and in the ideal alloy is a simple if you can take that chemical potential of an ideal alloy, just take a simple way and it is really convenient to retain certain expression. How to the mu A equal to G A plus R T L N A. And from that plot, you can see that G A and G B has certain values. And if you directly connect them with a straight line and again actual the variation of free energy curve of the mixing of the simple alloy or mixer of that A and B component. And if you try to get the difference, then you will get del G mix. The concept of del G mix is very clear to us now. Uh, already we learned it. Now we have to find out what is going to the cut point, what is going to do the common tangent point cutting two axes to extreme axes. One is pure A, one other is pure B axes. And there you are going to get mu A and mu B, two chemical potential. Then mu A, mu B plus RT. LNA, if you add two to them, you are going to get GB. So that's why the difference from o, a, a, B, a, the difference in the B, pure B axis, from GB and mu B is equal to minus RT ln AB. And if you look at the A axis, pure A axis part, there GA and mu A are differentiated by minus RT ln A. So now you understand the picture and that picture tells you between the correlation between chemical potential and the activity. You are getting the chemical potential and activity. So in general, AA and AB will be different from XA and XB. Now you understand that the typical mole fraction is not going to equal to the activity. Activity is really different. What is actually, you know, from the mole fraction, it's directly not representing the activity. It has a strong and significant contribution towards activity, but it is not directly representing the activity, that mole fractions. That part only we need to understand from this plot that activity and XA are not same. AA a, a, or activity of A component is not same with the mole fraction of A component. Now you have to find out since it is not same, then what will be the correlation? between mole fraction and activity that we have to understand and how we will understand based on our understanding of interaction parameter that is tau it is positive what will happen if it is negative what will happen how it is related to with the attraction force or liking from different atoms or disliking from attitude from different atoms that we have to understand and for that we are going to learn now correlation between mole fraction and activity. In general, if you see that activity of A is not same with the mole fraction of XA. And if you see activity AB also is not same with the mole fraction B that is XB. So there should be a relationship, a relationship between them also will be varied with respect to composition of the solution. So if you to take at regular solution, then you will get the expression ln of a, a by xa equal to tau by rt in the bracket multiplied by one by xa whole to the bar square. This actual representing the concept or the behavior of regular solution. Already we understood that. Now, if you assume that pure A and pure B have the same crystal structure and the relationship between a and AX for any solution can be represented graphically if you see in the picture. So here line one, if you look at line one, 
it it is representing ideal solution for which a a activity of a equals to mole fraction of a that is xa so aa equals to xa and activity of ab equals to mole fraction of b that is xb but if del h mix is less than 0 then activity of the component in the solution will be less than in ideal solution and that is representing line 2 if you look at the line 2 it's representing the scenario where del h mix is less than 0 and if you look at del h mix is greater than 0 that is line 3 there why what you are getting that the interaction parameter value will be greater than 0 means there is a chance of not liking by different atoms to us well, same atom like same atom and different atom does not like so they may repel they are repelling so if you look at when you are finding that activity and mole fraction are not same then only then only you try to find out what is the ratio between them the ratio of activity of a by a mole fraction of a you can represent or refer as a activity coefficient and then you are going to get the activity coefficient that is gamma if you look at the component a gamma equal to a of a by x of a so if you go for a dilute solution very very dilute solution where dilute solution of b in a then what will happen you are going to get simplified xb tends to zero in this scenario the gamma b equal to ab by xb and that is constant and if you are going to get such a scenario you look at the picture bottom of the picture it is actually representing henry's law so when somebody is talking about henry's law applying henry's law he or she must be very cautious which which what dilution you are looking at if the solution is not enough diluted then the reason of applicability of Henry's law is not there. I used to see a lot of people find themselves in, in a trap that they used to apply Henry's law when the solution is not enough dilute. So in, if you look at our steel making system, secondary steel making operation, there you can see the dissolved gases in a liquid steel is very less. There you can apply Henry's law, the dissolved impurities in silicon, phosphorus, sulfur are very less with respect to iron content in a particular steel. Then the, the liquid steel having a good amount of uh, enough dilution to apply Henry's law. So to apply in Saturn's law, you should remember when to apply and the applicability domain. So that is important. And if it is for, throughout the solution, if it is the chance of that activity is almost near the activity between activity A by mole fraction of A is nearly one, the gamma A, if you are finding, then you are, can apply the Rao's law. So when dilution is much less, then people are going to apply Rao's law. It's a general trend. So it is a Rao's law of solution. And Rao's law, when you are talking about xa equal to aa or xb equal to ab so this is the, the middle line will talks about raul's law when you can check that there will be a positive deviation if del h mix is greater than zero there will be a negative deviation if it is del h mix is less than zero so in this way you can understand there is a two law one is henry's law which is a very high dilution it is applied and one is Rao's law. And when you are another important thing, everybody should be very smart to understand that when you are applying Henry's law for a particular component, suppose B component, extreme dilute in this picture, you can see. Then at the same time, simultaneously you can apply Rao's, Rao's law to the A component because Henry's law for extreme dilution that is represented by content of B in a solution A. But A is not dilute. A is a main solvent. So there you can apply the Rao's law. So this kind of understanding for that particular correlation of mole fraction and activity is very, very important. Now the activity coefficient, what we have discussed, can be defined as a measure of deviation 
from a ideal solution we were as the ratio between the chemical activity and the mole fraction i is the solution already we have discussed that is activity coefficient and ideal solution activity coefficient must be equal to zero the partial molar drift energy of a mixing you can now represent on the basis of activity copy activity and how it is going to del h mix gi equal to rt ln ai and when you are going to get such kind of scenario you have to already this kind of calculation expression we are very familiar that when we are going to such scenario we try to find how it is related to del h mix of the mixer or del h mix of the mixer if you check this that is related to rt xa ln a there is a change in in this case for this kind of non ideal not so ideal case the change is there we used to conversant when it is the ideal case xa ln xa plus xb ln xb but here scenario is different here we are getting rt for the mixing of gm xa ln aa activity of a component xb ln ab and that's why there will be two part one is ideal part another is excess it is deviation from the ideal so rt if you a means gamma a into xa so if you this depart or you can separate this kind of expression then you are going to get one ideal part one excess part and people used to remember that it is a excess function excess gives energy which actually deviation from ideal solution to regular or even if you go for more realistic condition sub regular solution what we understood from previous lecture so till now we understood about what is activity what is fugacity and how it is related to del g mix for ideal and as well as regular solution and what is the comparative understanding between ideal mix ideal change in mix of ideal change in mix of gibbs free energy for ideal solution and change in mix of mixing gibbs free energy for real solution not real regular solution real is much more ahead we have to go that part we have discussed during the regular sub regular model of the solution thank you